So you're looking to start a modular synthesizer, but don't know how to. Well, in this video, I'm going to tell you how to build one and what you need coming up next. What's up guys, this is Mayen. Uh, I'm here to help you with the music making process. I am a recording artist with labels such as uh, Global On The Ground, Babic Style, No Robot Music, uh, to name a few. So in this channel, I'm gonna go over the, the way that I make music, right? Behind the scenes, the software synthesizers that I use, hardware that I use, how to do things uh, while I'm uh, jamming and how that makes sense to start making a track from scratch, right? Uh, so if you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. That will help me grow my, my, my channel as well. In this video, I'm gonna go over how to build a modular synthesizer and you will find all the links in the description below. So uh, before we get into like the modules and what they do and what you need, um, basically we need to understand HP, which is the uh, horizontal pitch and is the width of each of the modules, right? So the best way to understand this is, obviously you can search it online, but um, to understand the width of each of the elements here and what you would need and the size of case that you would need, I would suggest to go to modular grid and build your own uh, modular synthesizer, right? But for my case, uh, I bought this uh, Make Noise case, it's 104 HP. And I am going to be honest, uh, I filled it up really quickly. So if it's into your budget, you might wanna spend a little bit more money and get a bigger case. You know, one that has like a, a second line, which will be the 6U rack. This is just a 3U rack. So if I wanted to see, for instance, like the size of this mixer, you can just go in there and like look at the information of the module, right? And this one's, for instance, is 8 AP, HP, sorry, right? Then if I wanted to look at this quad ADSR, it's 26 HP. And if I wanted to look at the braids, for instance, this is the braids right here, which is a, uh, an, a macro oscillator, this one's 16 P. So once you start adding up all the HPs, then you're gonna be able to see how many modules you're able to stack in one of these racks, right? Uh, or one of the boxes uh, with power. Okay, so after we figured out which case we're going to get and the types of module, or like how many modules we're able to like put in there, right? The other thing is, uh, okay, you got your case, right? It's going to provide power to all the different modules. The important thing to see is that you get this uh, like ribbon cables that will provide power to each of the modules, right? But the other important thing is to see that they have like a red line. Make sure that you uh, you connect the, the the red line to the minus 12 volt uh, side of the of the case, because if you don't do that, then you might blow up one of your uh, modules, right? So going back to the type of modules that you need, you know, after you figure out in modular grid what you want and all this other stuff, I would suggest all my, what I needed, right? And uh, since I, uh, I make tracks and I, I like put them all together and I wanna, you know, then release them in like different labels, uh, I needed somehow to connect a modular directly with um, um, like uh, my DAW, which is logic, right? And to make it all sync up. So what I did is uh, I um, actually went and, and got my, like I decided to get a, a MIDI interface, and this is not the first one that I got. I actually got a Dofer a MIDI interface, and I decided to sell that one because it was a little bit too complicated for what I wanted to do. Uh, but on this one, then I decided to start looking into another one, and then I found this uh, Mutable Instruments Jarns, which is really simple to use. And then you have, you know, your CV output and your gate output, right? So the CV is the one that's going to control the pitch of, uh, of the different notes, right? And the gate is going to send a signal to kind of like activate the note. Uh, then after that, you know, and after you send gate, then you're going to start uh, like getting yourself into like other modules. But I'm not going to get into this one. I'm just going to give you the basic ones that you will need to start your modular synthesizer. This is like for beginners, right? So, I'm going to uh, suggest you get in, a friend of mine told me, get as many VCOs as you can, uh, because pretty much, you know, it's uh, 
it's kind of like the life force behind uh, modular synthesizers. Uh, those modules provide the raw audio signal uh, activated through voltage control, right? So basically, you would send voltage control to here, right? And then this will kind of like activate the notes that are going to be played with the BCO, right? So the BCO is like really important. Do your research. Uh, the first BCO that I bought, I did not like it because it was just too simple. So I didn't. I decided to get this Spectrum from uh, DMW, uh, WMD SSF, right? And then I was like, okay, so like this is cool, but I. I don't know, I need something else. And then I went for this macro oscillator from uh, Mutual Instruments with uh, the braids. And the cool thing about this one, right, is that um, you actually have different sounds already installed into the module. So you could start, you know, like designing like the different sounds, but starting with, with like a already designed like patch. And recently I got this Plunk uh, module, which Man, I don't, it's like, I haven't even explored it, but it's just really cool. So this one's for the, the one from the sound, right? Uh, okay. So the next module that you would want to get, right, it's uh, a BCA, which is, uh, it, it's, it's designed to control the intensity of an audio signal, right? So the BCA or you know, voltage control attenuator, right? Like their sole purpose is to to control how, how much of the signal is going through, right? And that one's important because once you're able to, you know, this one's gonna send, you know, like the the voltage control to, to the BCO, right? And then, but it turns out that, so many cases. The gate is actually going to control here, right? How much of the of the sound is going to come through after you send a signal from your VCO to the attenuator. Or the other word that I use, I mean I'm a Spanish speaker, so it's a uh, it's a voltage control uh, amplifier, right? So then you're gonna send this one, and this one's gonna be kind of like being is going to determine how sounds are sounds are going to go through, right? So that's kind of cool. Uh, so the last module that I'm going to talk about, it's going to be the BCF, uh, the voltage control filter, right? Uh, this one, for instance, like this module by Dofer, it's a low pass filter. So basically, what's going to happen is this is going to help you shape the sound that you're generating through your BCOs, right? And that's going to be amplified uh, by the BCAs. So those are like the basic models that you need. For instance, for me, the first module that I needed to get was the interface, the MIDI interface, then the BCO to generate the sound. Then I had to get the BCA to, uh, to see how much of the sound was going to go through. And then uh, I need to get a low pass filter. Then I'm not going to get to the other modules uh, and what they do and what they don't do because I think that for someone who is beginning uh, in the journey of modular, I do believe that uh, these ones are the ones that you need. So the question of the day is uh, what modules do you use and uh, what else would you like to see in my channel?